Rotella Resale, your premier collectibles, toys, and novelty retailer. Find the best and hard-to-find die-cast vehicles and action figures. Some of the most popular vinyl LPs, Zippo lighters, and comics. Support the best artists with our rock t-shirts and posters. You will find so much more at rotellaresale.com with free shipping on U.S. orders. Use promo code RADIO for 10% off your order. Visit rotellaresale.com. That is R-O-T-E-L-L-A-R-E-S-A-L-E.com. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. You're gonna acknowledge me. All right, everybody, welcome to the WWE Podcast. It is Tuesday, May 30th, 2023. Welcome to the show. I hope everyone's doing well. I attended Raw last night, as some of you may have seen. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, those of you that are brand new, welcome to the show. This is the WWE Podcast, the unofficial WWE Podcast. We are not affiliated with WWE in any way, but uh, welcome to the show nonetheless. This is a podcast by fans for fans. And I think we pride ourselves on the just authenticity of this show. We don't work for any major networks. We are just independent and can v- just spew our opinions without consequence. And we never, ever just try to cr- create clickbait. Okay. That's, I think, what maybe differentiates us from all the others. And you can go ad free, by the way, on uh, major platforms, including Apple. You can go ad free. You can go ad free on Patreon right now, which, by the way, is running a seven day free trial for those of you that want to try out Patreon. We almost never run that, so check that out. And uh, also WWEpodcast.com or WWEpodcastshop.com for your merch. All right, guys. Uh, Yeah, I attended Raw last night in Albany, New York at the MVP Arena. It was a lot of fun. I haven't been to a WWE event in, like I said, probably five years COVID took about two and a half, three of those years out of my life. Becoming a dad twice took a lot of time out of things to to do those kinds of of uh, uh, of adventures in my life. So this was the first time that I had been back at a live event, televised live event in five years, which doesn't seem like five years, uh, but uh, Raw 25 was the last one. This is Raw, uh, of course, five years later, and I had a lot of fun. I had great seats. I think that uh, the, the the fans in general around me had a good time. A little bit of a kerfuffle, and we'll talk about that. Um, I'll talk about things that happened during the show that you didn't see, because I think some of the things that happen during shows you may not be aware of if you haven't been to an event or haven't been to an event in a long time. I'll talk about that. The merchandise, the, the all of the, the even I'll, I'll talk about burger prices. Okay, <laughs> for those those of you that care about such things, because I caved and get a burger and, and water. Um, and, uh, well, take your over unders on how much you think just a cheeseburger. It did come with fries, a cheeseburger and a bottle of water. Uh, how much that, uh, cost got the number in your head, 19 bucks. <laughs> I mean, it is, but you, you expect it, but boy, you know, they're basically telling, you no, sir, bend over a little further, right? <laughs> but you're sometimes in desperation mode, thirsty, hungry. It was 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, I got to have something. And I slammed that down. And uh, anyway, we're not here to talk about burger and fries. We're here to talk about the, the wrestling event that was Monday Night Raw. And again, I had great seats. Some of you may have seen my sign. Uh, the best time that I think it was on TV was during Seth Rollins' entrance at the very beginning of Raw. When he was coming down, I did not know he was coming down that exact ramp. I was only a few seats away from him. Um, if I had reached out, I might have been able to touch him. Um, and uh, my sign was right there. It's almost blocking Seth Rollins. I'm sure the uh, camera crew did not like that, but uh, that's too bad. I was able to get free advertising <laughs> to, to millions of fans uh, at the event. And, hey, listen. Some people don't like that. Some look, but if you're a podcast and you got a wrestling event coming to your city, why would you not want to go to that event, create a sign for your show when the audience that you are directly trying to reach is coming to you, and you can reach 
hundreds of thousands, if not millions more at home. You got to be a fool not to go if you have a business revolving around, around wrestling and just shell out a few hundred bucks, get some good seats and, uh, you know, flash your sign here and there. And that's what I try to do. So, uh, the, the people around me, one of the guys sitting next to me, I was in, uh, section 120 for those that, uh, that means anything at the MVP arena, which is like a perfect section you want to be in for cam- uh, camera. Although I thought I was going to be the first row up. I was in row a, but apparently there's like row double a, which was still not on the floor, but there were sections below me that weren't on the floor, but still lower. I'm like, so why is this row a, if I'm, I don't know. I was very confused about that, but nonetheless, still good seats. And, um, the guy next to me was flashing his sign so much that the lady behind him was getting really angry and she ended up, uh, you know, telling mommy and daddy on him and he was with his son. She was with her son. Neither had a significant other with them. So they were almost single parenting the night and she was cussing. And I mean, I I didn't want to get involved. I was just, I'm too tired. I don't want to get involved in this stuff. Right. And I didn't, but I almost said something to her because she was, you know, just being a total, um, well, we're we're PG show, but think of the, think of a very naughty word. And that's what she was. And, uh, just in doing it, not just in front of her own son, who was probably no more than six or seven, but also in front of his son, who was about the same age. Uh, it's, you know. It's, it's just that's kind of the kind of crap that you don't want to deal with. But the guy next to me was cool. The people next to me, everyone else was uh, was pretty good and uh, no fights. Uh, I thought the crowd overall was subdued. I don't know if that came across on TV. I haven't watched a whole lot of TV back tonight, uh, this uh, afternoon and this morning. I haven't I haven't watched a whole back how much back other than just some of the clips that I posted on Twitter, which by the way, you can follow me at wrestling underscore audio. If you want to see some of those clips where it was just like a 10 second clip, maybe that for uh, just selfishly showing off my sign, which eh, whatever, right? (laughs) Selfless promotion. But I thought we were subdued and maybe that's because WWE enhances some of the crowd noise at times. They pump in crowd noise. I don't know if they ended up doing that last night. We, I thought we were loud, but maybe the problem is that the bar has been set so damn high by these overseas crowds and Puerto Rican crowds and that are just blowing everyone else out of the water that anytime you hear just a U.S. based crowd, it's like it, it's like people are sleeping. And I will say during the matches, and this has kind of been an Albany staple. We're not very loud during the matches unless it's big stars. We're very subdued. And, and I don't know how what much that came across during the uh, event. But uh, if I was to rank like pops of the night, because if someone was on the show, I'd ask them what were the pops of the night. I would say, you know, probably number one was Seth, followed very closely one A Cody Rhodes, and um, I have to say Cody Rhodes, like I still don't like his babyface character. He still has a lot of problems, but his entrance live is a lot of fun. Uh, did I do, whoa, yes, I did, okay? I'm not going to sit here and pretend I didn't participate, but I will not claim Albany. I, I will not be uh, subjected to the uh, to, to the what chance. I, I, don't, I don't own that. I did not participate in the stupid what chance that were going on during Trish's promo. I don't own those people, okay? I, 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 don't, I, I don't claim them, I mean. I don't claim them. They're not, they're not part of my family. I, I, I hate the watch chance at this point. Uh, but some of the other pops of the night, you know, actually Ronda Rousey and Shannon Baszler winning. I don't know how it came across on TV, but the Albany crowd kind of popped for that. Even popped for Ronda Rousey's entrance. Mostly cheers for Ronda Rousey. It, there wasn't a whole lot of heavy booing, uh, of course, until she got on the mic and said that she's doing this for herself, not doing this for anybody else in her awkward way that she does. Uh, so, but hey, Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey winning were the favorites. They should have won. Everyone else in that uh, fatal four way didn't make a ton of sense. Raquel and Shotzi just are a thrown together team. How Raquel Rodriguez is still a babyface is beyond me. She is she's everything you're looking for in a heel. She's physically imposing. She's trying to hide who she naturally. I don't know is as a person truly or 
how her character comes across on screen. She's almost trying to overcompensate by smiling a lot. And they just, I don't know. There, there's a, there's a heel desperately scratching and clawing to get out of her. And eventually when, when Raquel turns heel, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. I have to say that, but uh, for, for the time being, it's kind of like, you, you know, they, they weren't going to win. Plus Raquel just dropped the belts as part of a team with Liv, who of course got injured, which uh, instigated this whole uh, fatal four way. But the the match itself, I guess I'm starting there, w- was good. I, I, I enjoyed the Fatal 4-Way as a whole. Most people stuck around. Most people didn't go to the merch stand or the, the concessions. Most people stuck around knowing what was on the line, right? A, a championship uh, was on the line, the tag team champion, championship. And knowing that you're guaranteed to see new champions was a nice hook. And Ronda Rousey, I don't know if she's competed on Raw since before WrestleMania, I don't think she has. She beat down, beat down Raquel about a month ago that we're all supposed to forget about. And then uh, she, uh, just, she, her and her and uh, Shayna ended up winning. And people, again, popped for that because of star power. That, that's really the reason, I think, is the star power and the fact that, my God, Ronda Rousey's back. She doesn't compete much as it is. She's back on Raw. And it was it was cool seeing Ronda again. I'm, this isn't my this isn't changing my opinion of her in any way, but anytime you get to see stars of that caliber in your face, like within you know a stone's throw distance, it's pretty cool. I mean, it just is. Uh, but let me let me take a pause here. I just want to give a shout out to our latest patrons before I forget, Steve and Malachi, Malachi M and Steve M. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the party. Hope you guys both enjoy your ad-free experience. All right. Um, so as far as merch goes, the merch was heavy on Rhea Ripley and the Judgment Day, believe it or not. A lot of that merch, of course, the merch stand had a line, you know, backed up 50 people deep at least every time you went there, uh, which I didn't because you're overpriced. Every, every time you go to the merch stand, you're getting... You're paying like 30% more than if you went on WWEshop.com, <clears throat> especially for the championship belts that are always on sale, you know, at least a 25% sale. The, they were going there, I think, for like 450 when you could get it on WWE Shop for like 350 for the new World Heavyweight Championship. And some people buy them, and, and you know, God bless you. Um, but you, there's always deals, and uh, I, I, I've purchased there before, I, you know, but I, I've learned better of it, and... Uh, just if you don't want it and need it that minute, you go on uh, WWE shop. And uh, so there's a ton of mommy stuff. Th- there's a lot of mommy signs. Rhea be my mommy was probably the most prominent sign um, that you saw. That guy was a few rows in front of me. And uh, so a ton of that, a ton of uh, actually women. Uh, when I say women, young women, 18, 19, 16, 17, 18, 19, that were really into Rhea Ripley. She seems to be having really resonating with that core audience, at least from my quick sample last night. There was a lot of a lot of that, and I was expecting when the Judgment Day came out, and especially Rhea, that there would be a ton of cheers for Rhea, and there really there wasn't. There were some they they booed the Judgment Day, and Dominic is I guess the shield from Rhea being completely cheered, but anytime Rhea is alone. Rhea chance break out. I mean, she is ready to turn baby face anytime they want her to turn, but her and Dominic have such a great chemistry. They were just made for each other on air that I wouldn't touch it. Even though, you know that you could ex- make her explode into a baby face. Um, but having Seth hang on her arm and she didn't know he was there. And the crowd laughed at that. That, that was a, that was a funny moment. We'll get to that match. Uh, as far as Sammy and Kevin go, they also got, I, I'd say, the, the the number three pop of the night. They're in the top three. People really love them. And uh, th- their entrance live is also very fun. Sammy Zayn's music is so much fun to channel, uh, sing along to. Same with Shinsuke Nakamura. People love him. Well, they at least love his music. <laughs> um, and as far as Sammy and Kevin go, though, I think they were too much in comedy mode, honestly. I know they've been super serious the last several months, but... 
I don't know. I, I know. I guess on commentary they were in full comedy mode, and they can be funny, but sometimes they go too far. And it, whatever, it's one night they were trying to be a little bit more lighthearted. I understand, but they're still fun to watch. Sammy Chance, uh, as you heard, uh, singing along to his song. I mean, when you look at Shinsuke's theme song, Sammy's theme song, Cody's theme song, what do they all have in common? Right? Sing along. It's, uh, you know, show and tell. It's that kind of crowd participation that people love. And when they have a catchy song, that's a babyface song that you can sing along to. It becomes that more interactive and you, you, you create a stronger connection. And I think that's what happens has happened in part with these three, particularly Cody and Sammy um, who have done a great job, but also um, have been helped along by their music. And it reminds you just how important sometimes entrance music can be. So, all right, well, let's talk a little bit about a little bit more about what happened before Raw went on the air that you guys didn't see. I walked into a match. I was in the, was in the middle of it between Akira Tozawa and Dexter Loomis. That was on main event. And so you can watch that. That was a, a good match. They ended up shaking hands at the end, believe it or not. Uh, Dexter Loomis did not talk as expected, but a decent match that kind of just got the crowd going. Uh, and so that was fun. But, uh, during the commercial breaks before I forget, because I'm going to run down raw here, match by match during the commercial breaks, there were a couple of fun things that happened. They did the DX chops where everyone in the crowd could participate with the DX stuff, you know, just doing the DX suck it, you know, crotch chops. Well, that's all good and, and, and fun. But when you have a PG product, and you have families coming with very young children. I, I should have taken a video of it. I mean, it was absolutely hilarious, but also disturbing. There were tons of parents with younger kids, I'd say in between the ages of four and 10, that were participating in the DX chops. And they were putting them on screen and everyone's like, ha, huh, isn't that so funny? And like, yeah, in one sense, it is seeing these kids who have no idea what this actually means and what it used to mean back in the late 90s, and the trend that it started, and how many of us that are millennials got in trouble in high school and middle school for doing the DX chop when it was actually in, in, in vogue, right? And now you have these kids who have no idea, who are like two generations removed from th th this actually being a thing in real time, and they have no idea what it means. They just do it because that's what you do with this, you know, when you see DX. It's just the innocence of the kids who have no idea what this actually means. I would not have my kid doing a DX chop. I mean, I just wouldn't. Think. I mean, we all know what that implies, right? I got two words for you. I mean, it's all. it all becomes clear when you get older of like, oh, <laughs> it's not just catchy. It's not just words. I see what they're implying. And it's just a little disturbing to see young kids doing this. I know some of you, oh, it's all in fun. But like, is it? I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's a little disturbing. I don't know. I'm not trying to be a prude. I, I just, if you saw it, you'd see what I mean. But anyway, they did that. They did the people's eyebrow where they'd zoom in on random people doing the, the eyebrow. That was fun. And some of the people were really funny. Uh, so that happened during commercial breaks. And uh, what else did they do? They ran a ton of ads. They did um, a Stone Cold uh, kind of a Broken Skull Sessions bonus segment with Mick Foley about rating 1 to 10 about his levels of pain for certain things he's gone through in his career. That was fun to watch. Uh, we saw some Undertaker clips. Um, we saw Baghdad. We saw a Memorial Day video, um, the, the tribute to the troop stuff that happens every Christmas. That was cool. So that was a lot of fun. Also, show, show your sign, like sign of the night, and they'd go around, and my sign was not on there because they didn't, you know, they didn't want to give me free promotion. I don't know why that is. But anyway, that's the stuff that happened during the show, during the commercial breaks, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So, all right, let's, let's just dive into Raw. Uh, we're going to do that in just a minute, but uh, we're going to give some love to the sponsor of today's episode, and then we'll be right back. We're going to go right into 
raw and go step by step. So don't go anywhere. Rotella Resale, your premier collectibles, toys, and novelty retailer. Find the best and hard-to-find die-cast vehicles and action figures. Some of the most popular vinyl LPs, Zippo lighters, and comics. Support the best artists with our rock t-shirts and posters. You will find so much more at rotellaresale.com with free shipping on U.S. orders. Use promo code RADIO for 10% off your order. Visit rotellaresale.com. That is R-O-T-E-L-L-A-R-E-S-A-L-E dot com. All right, welcome back. Let's dive into Raw, guys. Let's just do it. So opening Raw is always, uh, not as always, but as you know, Seth Rollins opens the show, comes down the uh, steps, feet from me, uh, gets into the ring, and confetti and pyro go, go off. We we did do a You Deserve It chant, and Rollins said it's been a long road to becoming World Heavyweight Champion, and Rollins said it was just feels right. And he was focused on the future and said, finally, Monday Night Raw has a champion that wants to be here. A champion is going to be here and a champion who is ready for a fight. So, see, Rollins said he wants all the fights. He said it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. If you step to him, the result will always be the same. He'll be standing in the ring with the title around his waist. And as we sing his song, so we we, we played our part well, right? I think we did. And then, then AJ Styles comes out. And I'm conflicted about this. I love myself some AJ. AJ Styles reminded us how good he can be at the age he's at and the mileage and wear and tear on his body. He can still put on an A performance in a main event. And he showed that at Night of Champions. Now, granted, he's in there with all the, another world-class athlete in Seth Rollins, but still, he played his part well and showed very little ring rust. So I love that. And he's, he, you immediately can insert him into a main event picture instantly but the problem i have with this is well he's on smackdown i just uh, he says okay styles comes out though he immediately acknowledges that he should be on smackdown because he was drafted there but he couldn't resist coming to raw to say congratulations and then he uh gave rollins everything he had and he left it all in this ring and said it was almost as if Rollins knew what he was going to do before he did it. And uh, he said that he didn't think Rollins deserved anything. And the crowd booed and I thought it was a heel turn and it wasn't, but he said, you earned the right to be world heavyweight champion. And that's kind of when they shook hands and the judgment day comes out. But before the judgment day gets there, okay. AJ acknowledges he's supposed to be on SmackDown, but he's on raw. Well, Again, acknowledging a wrongdoing and still doing it doesn't make it better. In fact, it makes it worse acknowledging you know you're not supposed to be there, but yet still taking up time on a show that you weren't drafted to. Now, I know it's not AJ's fault. It's not his character's fault. It's WWE management. And I know that, oh, well, what do you want to do? They could have, if, 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 if they really wanted that moment, they could have just done it via social media. You could have had a quick video package from Seth, a quick interview. Instead, they decide to give the old F you to the draft. It's very, this is to me, if you're looking for additional evidence that Vince still has some influence, here is a massive clue. Okay. This is what, this is the stuff that makes me concerned. This is a staple of the Vince McMahon drafting policy. That policy is there isn't one. There's an imaginary one they that they tell you exists when they implement the draft. And then there's the real one of, well, we don't really have one. That's very Vince McMahon-y, okay? That bothers me. That bothers me on the level that Vince could still have some influence on creative, which I don't like. I mean, I, I just don't. Because we've seen what Vince can do. We've seen the best of Vince but it's just time to step aside. That's all it is. I'm not saying he had anything to do with this, but if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, I don't know what to tell you. So there's that. Then there's also the fact that if it's not, and it's Triple H, this is not the way you want to start off a draft. They haven't gone a single week yet. I don't know if they have. Since the draft was implemented, where they were 100% clean on both sides. And... The, the, the strange part is I'm not opposed 
to having a Raw star on SmackDown or a SmackDown on Raw star uh, Raw every like I don't mind that happening, but the problem is it has happened so often in the past that when it happens now, you're just kind of shrug your shoulders and go, oh, cool, he's here, or oh, cool, she's here. I didn't expect that. Instead of the reaction that you should have if the draft was implemented with rules that actually were adhered to of, oh, my God, they're here. I can't believe that because it would feel like they're from a different world. It would feel like they're not, they are truly not supposed to be there. Instead, and you know I'm right, you look at it and go, hey, wait a minute, isn't uh, isn't he or she supposed to, aren't they supposed to be on SmackDown? Or aren't they supposed to be on Raw? Oh, okay, cool. Well, I guess that's cool they're here. Don't tell me you don't have that reaction. Nobody at home is sitting there going, holy crap, AJ Styles is on Raw? Nobody. Exactly zero people. Many studies can confirm this. So... That's the problem. I don't mind it happening, but when it happens, there has to be a major reason, a major purpose, and that's how you know that your draft has been successful. When you have two worlds that coexist parallel with one another, but very rarely, if ever, overlap. And they just can't help themselves. And I'm sure management's like, you you try creating a three and a half or a three-hour raw, a three-hour wrestling show. Uh, I would say, well, then don't have a draft. Okay, if you can't adhere to your rules and you're not going to abide by them for any length of time at all, then don't do it because otherwise you're just insulting the intelligence of fans and you're making a mockery of your own product. And I know some people think you're overblowing this. I'm not. I'm not because this has been a, a, a problem that I know that they could solve easily. And if they did, it would make the crossover so much more meaningful. But I guess I'm just uh, sitting in an echo chamber at this point. There's more on that too with Adam Pierce. We'll get to that. But um, this eventually got to a, a match that AJ and Rollins agreed to team up against two members of the Judgment Day. We didn't know who those people were going to be, but there's really only two options it could really be. You'd imagine. Either Dominic is there or Dominic's not. So you kind of thought off the bat that it's going to be Priest and it's going to be Balor because Dom and Rhea have been very instrumental and influential on the outside of the ring. And that's exactly what we got. But um, all right. So we we did try to drown out Dom. I don't know if that came across too. We were uh, chanting a you suck chant at, at Dom and trying to boo him off the microphone. But boy, oh boy, is he just a great heel. Oh my God. He's so good. I mean, people genuinely hate him. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. All right. Um, We did get, by the way, Adam Pierce on the uh, backstage, in, in backstage talking to somebody who we don't know who that is. You can only imagine it's either Triple H or Vince. I mean, it seems to be the only two people he could be on the phone with. And he said that he acknowledged that Rollins, Styles, and the Judgment Day wanted the match despite it going against what they were trying to do with the brand split. Pierce put the person on hold and told Rollins and Styles he was trying to get the match approved. And then Pierce spoke to the person on the phone and said he would indeed make the match official. Well, of course he's going to make the match official. But it still violates the rules that they put into place acknowledging it doesn't make it better. It only enhances the problem because then people feel that, well, as long as they acknowledge it, that's okay. That makes it better because they know they're doing something wrong. But if they know they're doing something wrong, then it's not as bad. No, it's worse. It's worse because you're making a mockery of it and saying, well, as long as we say to the crowd verbally outright, that we know what we're doing isn't supposed to be done, the fans will go, oh, well, at least they know what we're thinking. Well, that's okay. Continue doing something wrong. No. I know how most fans are probably just brushing it off. It's just, I don't know. Sorry, guys. I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent with this, but it's ridiculous. The problem is they're trying to desensitize us to, I think, going back to kind of where we were slowly where it was something that happens on a regular basis 
where it, now it may not be every week again. It, it probably will be every month. You'll see somebody on the opposing show that shouldn't be there. And then they'll be there getting into a program with someone on the opposite brand for the next pay-per-view. And they'll be on the show a couple times a week. And it is, it's kind of the boiling frog theory. And that's what I think is going to happen. I just don't have any trust in them. None. And they have broken the rules even faster than I could have ever imagined. So anyway, all right. We then get a Money in the Bank qualifying match. That is Ricochet and The Miz and a Money in the Bank uh, uh, match where the winner will get a opportunity in the uh, ladder match. And Ricochet beat The Miz in eight minutes and 50 seconds. The crowd was really quiet for uh, Ricochet's intro. I don't know. They pro- I don't think they showed Ricochet's intro. And, and for that matter, The Miz didn't get much of a reaction either. I'd say The Miz got cheers more than booze ricochet barely got anything until he hit his 450 splash it, it felt like ricochet's entrance i mean people some people reacted but it was gen gen generally that's the word not genuinely quiet and again if that didn't come across on tv i don't know if they showed it on tv i don't think they showed his entrance so it's probably a good thing but ricochet beat the miz in eight minutes and 50 seconds and so the uh, ricochet's in. He had hit his shooting stars press and uh, got the victory. Okay. Then we uh, got the Trish Stratus, Zoe Stark segment. And she was apparently, same with uh, Lynch who came out later, they didn't change clothing from Night of Champions. They just apparently have slept in it the last two days. Because Stratus wore her gear from Night of Champions and have a she did have a thank you Trish on the back, which was funny. And the fans really took the Trish. I mean, I don't know if that came across on TV either, but very few people were booing Trish Stratus. People, I think, were excited to see Trish knowing that she is a nostalgic act that is living up to her past, uh, you know, her, her past performances and just I think it came out of appreciation. It literally did. And people were chanting, thank you, Trish. I was chanting, thank you, Trish. I was on board for that. I was doing it. And it was a lot of fun to see her. Because when you see her live, you're you're thinking to yourself, this is probably the last time I'm seeing her live. You know? So it was, it was, it was kind of that feeling, I think. But uh, Zoe Stark came out. She was wearing a thank you, Trish t-shirt. And she said that she got into the business to make a statement and who better to learn from than the OG herself. This is God. This is so Vince. How many, what statements, by the way, if, if, if making statements are so important, I mean, why aren't people making written statements? I mean, it's just, everything has to be a statement, everything. No, it doesn't. How about she could just say she came here to, uh, you know, run Monday Night Raw, or she came here to dominate the women's division and learn from the best. I don't know. Anyway, she said she could have taken the long, difficult road like Lynch did, or could be smart and led by Stratus. And uh, Becky Lynch came out, and she was also dressed in her Night of Champions gear, and said she would ruin Stark's life. And she was in her gear, and so was Trish. And she she suggested they restart the match and finish it one on one. And uh, it basically was a beatdown of uh, of Lynch after that. And I was waiting for somebody to come to her aid, and it didn't happen. Eventually, that will happen. I would imagine uh, there will be somebody maybe from NXT that comes up and even the odds or somebody in the existing roster, I don't know, uh, that we're not thinking of. Or maybe somebody from NXT that was drafted the main roster. How about that? All right. Then we get... The end of Sheer versus Jinder and, and uh, a partner. And um, the end of Sheer, Vera Mahan and Sangha, rather, beat. Now, let me uh, <laughs> let me try to pronounce this. Javier Bernal, and I don't know who the partner was. But it was a minute and 15 seconds. So the end of Sheer defeated the local talent, I would imagine. That's who they were. And it was a squash match, but cool to see them in person. Obviously, the first time I've seen them in person, they are imposing. I think they've got a bright future, at least a world, uh, our tag team championship match, probably in the next 
four to six months, at least a shot at the belts. I'm not saying they're going to win, but probably a shot at Kevin and Sammy with those uh, tag team championships on the line. But still cool. Still cool to see the end of year. Never saw them in, in person before. All right. A lot of highlights, by the way, of Jimmy turning on Roman. That happened like five times throughout the night. They really made sure that we knew about it. <laughs> uh, and, of course, hyping the 1,000-day celebration of Roman Reigns as champion. That was uh, pretty heavily hyped as well. All right. We got, let's see, the Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci versus Alpha Academy. That was fun. People were really into Chad Gable. The, the whole shoosh thing from the stage, people were really into that. Chanting for Otis throughout the match. And my God, Otis is a bigger man than you realize, guys. I know on TV, you're, you know, the, the whole tree trunk analogy. He's bigger than most tree trunks. I'm serious. The dude is a absolute wall of a man. I mean, he's absolutely a wall of a man. Um, but anyway, the whole Baldy thing. It might catch on with Giovanni Vinci, and it was funny that uh, Kevin Owens pointed out the fact that Giovanni Vinci has nothing to say, which really just points out a weakness that his promo skills are obviously not where they needed to be for him to speak, and they just trust Ludwig Kaiser to basically do any of the talking along with some from uh, Gunther himself. But the whole Baldy thing, people did chant Baldy during the match, and if it catches on, great. I mean, even if it's negative attention, it's still attention. And that's something Giovanni Vinci has not had at all. He's kind of the third wheel. No, he is the third wheel, the invisible third wheel of Imperium. So it's nice to see him get some attention. So, and as I'm uh, an actual uh, member of the bald community myself, I, I feel a bit of a connection with him. So, all right. I mean, it's bald, not really by, well, kind of by choice because I, I could grow up my hair, but my God, would it be embarrassing? It would be just, I, I don't even think I would put, <laughs> people have asked, oh, you know, w- would you ever put a bet on something where if you lost, you'd have to grow your hair out? I don't think I would. It would be that bad. <laughs> so trust me when I say, I am a proud member of the bald community. We're a proud people. All right. So uh, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci defeated the Alpha Academy in about five minutes. And they should have, okay, because they're clearly going to be challenging Sammy and Kevin for the tag team titles. Are they winning? Hell no, but they are formidable opponents and having them get the victory here puts them in the position to say, hey, yeah, um, at least put them in a number one contenders match if they already aren't already by default the number one contenders all right. After the Imperium, though, they uh, struck their pose, and Owen said Vinci should Vinci Vinci. I'll get it right. Should wipe the sweat off his head because it was so shiny. And Graves looked into the camera and played up being annoyed with the tag team champion. So Corey Graves, oh cool dude. People were shouting from my section, "We love you, Corey!" And during the commercials, he was sitting at the announce desk and like he'd wave to us, and so he seemed like a cool guy. All right. What else? Um, We got the, oh, as I said, the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match, which had Raquel and Shotzi, Ronda and Shayna, Bailey and Io, Sonya and Chelsea uh, Green. And uh, I, I, again, fine match. Rousey and Baszler winning makes sense. The tag titles need help. But every time we think the tag titles are about to be revived, they go into hiding again. So we'll see if history continues to repeat itself. I hope not. And, uh, you know, the rumors of Ronda going away don't seem to be coming to fruition. You wouldn't put a belt on somebody that's about to go away again. So we will see. We will see. And by the way, Shayna has completely abandoned her identity just for the sake of absorbing whatever, whatever personality that Ronda has for her entrance. Shayna has completely just, I, I mean, been she's been baptized in whatever character Ronda Rousey is with the face paint. There's no more music for Shayna Baszler. It's all Ronda Rousey's music. Um, you know, just I don't know. I I miss the Shayna Baszler that had her own damn identity of being a killer 
and a limb snapper. And she just kind of feels second fiddle to Rhonda in terms of star power anyway. So anyway, let's continue. We got uh, Dolph Ziggler versus J.D. McDonough. This was okay. I mean, Ziggler, uh, J.D. McDonough fought Ziggler to a double count out here in about a minute. So this is this is the role that I told you guys is exactly where they need Ziggler. He is the guy that's in-house enhancement. He is the guy that's going to help introduce new talent and put them over. And sure, Ziggler didn't lose clean tonight, but he's on his way. He's going to lose clean, whether it's on a Monday Night Raw or at a pay-per-view. He's losing clean to the new talent. So J.D. McDonough didn't get a massive entrance uh, pop either way. People were kind of quiet for that. Ziggler got a okay uh, reaction to his entrance. But J.D. McDonough, I think people, most people were probably looking at him going, huh, who? And that's what you get when you, even if you're in the same WWE umbrella, a lot of NXT fans, or rather Raw fans, don't watch NXT. I mean, 100%, I would imagine, of people that watch NXT or very high percentage also watch the main roster, but it doesn't go the other way. So that's what happens. That's one of the downsides of coming up from NXT to come on the main roster here is that you have to assume nobody knows you because in a lot of instances, they probably don't. All right, let's see. Cody comes out at the top of the third hour. As I said, his entrance music is a lot of fun. His entrance is a lot of fun. And I forgot how loud those damn fireworks are. They don't come across nearly as loud as they should be on at home. It's like a bomb going off. I mean, just <laughs> the, the entrance music is so loud. It's uh, or his, his fireworks pyro are so loud. It, it jarred me a few times, but uh, so Cody comes out and it's weird. Cody can turn a promo that ultimately has no direction or rather real substance into something that feels like he said something because he's got a good posture and confidence about him and a real sense of realism about him that when they just basically told Cody, Hey, um, just we're going to uh, eventually do Brock and uh, you down the line for part three. But uh, just say you're going to give him, you know, you're going to just give Brock an open challenge and you fill in the rest. Right. That's exactly what Cody did. And that's, that's exactly what management probably told him because Cody is car- capable of carrying a promo himself. He doesn't need anyone to write for him, but that's what it felt like. It felt like a whole bunch of nothing. And pauses for applause where like when he said, you know, that Brock Lesnar has taken his annual vacation. Now there's a lot of truth on that. Typically he does go on his annual WrestleMania night after WrestleMania until about July, uh, you know, sabbatical. And perhaps that's what he's done back in Saskatchewan or wherever he's living. But for the record, I also booed Cody as loud as I could when he said, so Albany, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I did not cheer for that because it's not a cheerable question. As I've gone over many times, it's a ridiculous. All it is is a way for him to get a cheap pop to endear himself by mentioning the name of the city that you're in, but giving the crowd a question they can't cheer or boo or answer. It's, it's just a way of him trying to insert the name. How do I get the name of the city in a, in a, in a uh, beginning of every promo? How do I do that? And he came up with this. I don't know. I still don't think it's going to work. I booed it. Okay. I did not cheer like, yay. He said the name of my city. I don't care. I know, but everyone loves that. Cause I think they like, they're talking directly to them. It's like, no, nah. bro. In, in Albany, there's a, uh, what? 18,000 people in the building. Number one. And uh, in Albany as a whole, I think we have about a hundred thousand people who live here. I don't know. So what do I know? Anyway, I booed it. And uh, the ultimate goal, of course, of this promo was to just say to Brock, anytime, anywhere, I'll be ready. Uh, you know, when you want to have this rubber match, that's all he said. Now, Cody said he lost to Lesnar due to ref referee stoppage. Um, no, uh, the answer is no to that. I mean, the referee stopped the match, but only because the rules dictated so. It wasn't just a discretionary stoppage. 
I think that's the that's the distinction. I mean, you could argue that uh, being pinned is referee stoppage. The referee stopped the match because he counted to three. That's part of the rules, right? You were counted out. The referee stopped the match. You struck the referee. The referee stopped the match. That's ref stoppage. I know it's a finish we don't see too often of somebody passing out. It's very babyface esque to do. Instead of tap out, you pass out. It shows you've got courage. You'll never quit. You'll pass out before you quit. Hey, we get that. We've seen it a million times. But um, to, to say it's referee stoppage, he's trying to instill the, the, the thought in your mind that, well, it was just so brutal. The referee discretionarily outside of the typical rule book decided to stop the match. Like it was Seth Rollins and uh, Bray Wyatt and Hell in a Cell five years ago. That whole debacle, right? That's referee stoppage. When the referee stops a match, when I hear ref stoppage, it's for something that's outside the box. That's not typical. That doesn't happen often at all, right? Extreme brutality. Someone's bleeding. There's an actual injury. That kind of thing. I don't know. It was very misleading, I think, with the language choice that he had there of Cody, or rather the referee, stopping the match. Anyway, I'm just sensitive to that kind of stuff with Cody because I think most people probably didn't care about that or missed it. So he talked about a wildly popular superstar that used to sit in the, stand in the ring and say, never give up. And so... Basically, he took that and ran with it for part of his promo and said that uh, he is going to fight Lesnar. He's ready to fight him wherever he goes. Where do I think this is going to happen? It could happen at Money in the Bank in the O2 Arena in London. That's a massive arena. It's a, they're trying to promote this as a, a stadium match. I get it. But it could happen at SummerSlam. We literally could be waiting seven weeks, eight weeks. Until SummerSlam. We could be. I mean, Cody could go on to another program for another, a month and forget about it. And that's when Brock shows up. I'm still of the belief Cody could get into the Money in the Bank ladder match. And he's, he's next week, his focus shifts to the Money in the Bank ladder match. We're all supposed to put Brock at the back of our minds. Like, okay, he'll come in at some point. It probably won't be till SummerSlam. And then Cody wins his qualifier, gets the Money in the Bank, climbs the ladder, is about to win. Brock screws Cody out of the belt or out of the briefcase. And then you get Brock and Cody part three final match rubber match at SummerSlam. I think that's very plausible. You still could do it before at money in the bank, but if you're trying to extend this and you have a guaranteed great event, a guaranteed very good match for SummerSlam for two top guys, Cody and Brock part three. And this time, make it no DQ. I don't know if it's Hell in a Cell or they do a cage or whatever it may be. It may be a pit fight, right? I think that's very possible as well. All right. Uh, we got Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bronson Reed. This one surprised a lot of people, including myself. Nakamura was over uh, with the crowd. Bronson Reed got a mild reaction. And that's putting it nicely. But Nakamura beat Bronson in 8 minutes and 45 seconds to qualify for Money in the Bank. He hit us uh, two Kinshasa's for the victory here. But very surprising. I mean, given where they positioned Bronson Reed and have positioned him in the past, it's just very interesting that they would have Shinsuke go over here. Maybe they have bigger plans for Bronson at the event, at uh, Money in the Bank. Maybe they do. Maybe they have a second chance qualifier. They have that sometimes. Everyone that lost a qualifying match gets a second chance in some kind of fatal four-way, right? That happens. So this, he still could get in the match. just didn't happen here, which was surprising. But I didn't hate it. I really didn't. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, the Memorial Day package uh, played. People were chanting USA. Um, let's see. We got Seth Rollins and AJ versus Damian Priest and Finn for the main event. This did end with AJ and Seth beating Finn Balor and Damian Priest in uh, just about 13 minutes. Fine matchup. I mean, you have Seth Rollins, who's a fresh, newly crowned world heavyweight champion. You're not going to make him look like garbage. 
and you need to have him coming off looking strong, and that's good. We still don't have a clear-cut opponent here, though, for Seth. People were speculating that it was going to be Drew McIntyre, and it still could be. And I think he's back with the company, by the way. I think he re-signed because I don't know if you guys saw it at home, but there was there were a few promos during commercial breaks where they showed Drew in um, you know, some, oh God, I forget what the heck it was. Uh, it was a promotion for WrestleMania or something for, from this past year. And it was, um, who, who's the guy from Fight Night that broke Big E's neck? We have, uh, oh, Ridge Holland. And he was in a massage parlor, a very suggestive one, if you know what I mean. And um, he was getting a waxing done for his chest. And he was cussing. Of course, it was being bleeped out, but it was very bizarre. And it had all the members, or have Seamus and Drew making fun of Ridge, getting his hair and his chest waxed by this Asian woman. And it was a promo for this past year's WrestleMania. I'm not kidding you. And Drew did look like he grew his hair out a little bit more, by the way. Um, so I think he's back with the company. That's my my guess. Otherwise, they wouldn't have Drew in anything if they have parted ways or couldn't come to an agreement. But boy, that was a weird promo. Anybody that was there live knows what I'm talking about. Everyone at home that's like, what, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't see that. I think it was for you know an in-house audience only. Keep stuff. Keep the audience occupied during commercial breaks. That's what that was. All right, uh, but the main event, again, fine with me. It made sense. AJ and Seth win. Now, what happened after the match? I don't know. Why? Because I hauled my ass out of there as fast as I could. If you think I'm sticking around to deal with 15,000 plus people in a concourse trying to get through the doors, it's hot, bumping into you, People are moving, you know, at a snail's pace. And then you got to sit in a parking lot and try to back out of your space and get out of the parking garage. If you think I'm dealing with that crap for a a dark match, uh, no. Ain't happening. As as Austin would say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm out. Gone. (laughs) Okay, so I just, I don't know what happened after the match. There might have been a dark match. I don't know what they said or announced or whatever. But a lot of people did seem to leave when I was leaving. I have to say, people were kind of rushing for the exits, trying to do the same thing I was doing. But there is and always will be a handful of people, 50% or less, that stick around to see if there's some kind of surprise at the end. So take that for what it's worth. Um, But just if you're interested in the after match antics, you're going to have to find another website (laughs) because I don't know what the heck happened or somebody else that was in Albany that may be able to tell you that weren't, wasn't so concerned about just getting out of the parking lot and getting the hell home. Boy, I was tired. You know, I shoved down a water and a cheeseburger at 10 PM and I'm sitting there like, man, I wish I was just laying in bed right now. I love wrestling, but I'm just like, Oh, I am toast, right? Done. Finite. I don't know. In my old age of 38, it's uh, my bedtime is like 1030 and it's if it's not 10, 1030 and my body, I'm all screwed up. Right. And I fall asleep quick too. my wife. She, she needs like time to fall asleep. I lay my head on my pillow and most nights, 95% of the time I'm, 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 I'm just out. It's like they put me in anesthesia. I'm gone. You know, I'll see in, you know, in the, in the other dimension, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Guys, thanks so much for joining me here on the WWE Podcast. If you have questions for me specifically about Raw, I'm sure there was many things like, you didn't address this or this or this. Did you see this? What did you think about this? I, I can't I can't answer all that right now, but what I can do is ask you to send that in because tomorrow's the mailbag. And the mailbag allows me to answer you directly. You can email us mailbag at wwepodcast.com. That's mailbag at wwepodcast.com. Or you can go and uh, call us and leave a voicemail. And that number is in the description notes of all of our mailbag shows, which drop every Wednesday. So if you're interested in asking me something specific about raw, my experience or something I did sit, did see, or didn't see, it's the way to do it. Uh, 
Also, if you want to go ad free, wwpodcast.com is a great way to do that. You can go VIP there and go ad free or ad free on Apple Podcasts or uh, WWE Shop, or rather, WWE Podcast Shop.com is all. Uh, all of our merchandise laid out there for you to, to browse. And I hope you take, take a look at that. If not, you can just leave us a five-star rating everywhere that we can, everywhere that five-star ratings are available. That's a great place to do it. And only five-star. I, like I said, if I catch any one of you giving us less than five stars, I will find you. I'm watching. Don't think I'm not. All right. Thanks everybody for listening. I really hope everyone has a great day or night and I will talk to you tomorrow on the mailbag. Take care. Rotella Resale, your premier collectibles, toys, and novelty retailer. Find the best and hard-to-find die-cast vehicles and action figures. Some of the most popular vinyl LPs, Zippo lighters, and comics. Support the best artists with our rock t-shirts and posters. You will find so much more at RotellaResale.com with free shipping on U.S. orders. Use promo code RADIO for 10% off your order. Visit RotellaResale.com. That is R-O-T-E-L-L-A-R-E-S-A-L-E.com. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.